everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and we're visiting somewhere different today. The San Diego Zoo. Let's go. That's right, while technically this is not a theme or amusement park, it is in Balboa Park, so I'm counting it. We're Park Bros, it's not, it's not we're theme park bros or amusement park bros. So today we're going to the San Diego Zoo. Realistically, one of the most famous zoos in the entire world and a lot of the times rated the number one zoo in the world. So super excited to visit. Again, I used to come here all the time, especially as a little kid, but I haven't been in a little bit, so it'll be nice to see a bunch of the changes. All right, we've officially stepped inside, grabbed ourselves a little map. And they actually have a mobile map too that you can access with a little QR code. So let's go ahead, look around in real life, see what the map equals to us. Well, if you're curious where we went, we went, we took a right uh, toward Africa Rocks and the Elephant Odyssey, but we're walking by the, the trams. They have giant trams, double-decker buses that go around the entire zoo and give you a, a full tour from a little higher up and there's tons of them literally all over the park, but we're just gonna walk right now, I think. Maybe take a, a mode of transportation soon, but super excited to be back here. It, it was great. It's just great. Upon our first bit of theming, the Australian Outback. The first exhibit we come upon is of course the all famous Laughing Kookaburra. Now, we can't really see where they are today, but we can definitely see some Wonga pigeons over there, which is the little birds over there. And you can see the double-decker bus coming by in the background. Oh, well, we found him, the laughing kookaburra. Just walked by some more iconic creatures from the outback, the wombat. And now we're actually over, not technically in the outback anymore, to the Tasmanian devil. I, I find this hilarious, though, even though we can't find any right now. One of them is named McLovin. That's not a joke. We did just pass Sydney's restaurant and like, I guess they have barbecue and whatnot over there. But we've come over to the urban jungle, which is where the giraffes are. Look at that little baby over there. Probably, uh, yeah, not even a year old, by the way. Born January 30th of this year <laughs> at birth, 141 pounds. To give you an idea of how much that is, that, that, that's about what I weigh. But at birth, that's crazy. That's just absolutely crazy. Giraffes always been some of my favorite creatures. I mean, just, they're so majestic to me. Walking past lunch, it would seem. So they're, they're refilling those baskets with all their favorite treats. And we're gonna keep walking by. Just past the giraffes, however, are zebras. And even a miniature donkey. Here's an up close look at that Grant's zebra. Absolutely majestic. But I will say one of my favorite animals of all time, we'll see a little later on, is kind of a mixture between a zebra and a giraffe. Not exactly, but definitely looks like it. And of course, it would not be a zoo of any kind without a crap load of flamingos. This isn't the only flamingo enclosure in the zoo, by the way. There's one up near the entrance. But yeah, tons and tons of flamingos. And that smell will stick with you all day long. Here, of course, is a great indicator of what type of flamingo you're dealing with because they are literally from all over the world. I think these are greater flamingos or maybe American. I'd have to get a closer look. Or I could just look at this sign. They're American flamingos. Look at this, we have a cheetah over here right under the tree, chilling out, sleeping before using all that energy to sprint at crazy speeds. Literally faster than all the roller coasters, which is insane. After checking out Africa for a little bit, we're coming back to Australia to see some koalas. Well, we've already spotted one taking a nap up in those trees. Fun fact, there are over 900 types of eucalyptus trees and the koalas are quite picky to the trees that are available in their region. I won't lie to you, I read that on a sign, but great to see the koalas. Seriously, so many koalas in this giant exhibit 
kind of harder to spot, I'm sure, on camera at least, but you can definitely see them in person a heck of a lot better. Next logical step though, from Australia to Africa to Australia? Well, we're going back to Africa, but for African rocks, oh look, wildlife. I see a little lizard. Well, that's, that's different. Oh, dang it. The baboon outpost with dipping dots, it, it's closed today. Dang it. But at least crowds are not bad. And to give you an idea on crowds right now, it is a Friday in August. Almost the end of August, actually. I think it's the last Friday of the month, but still pretty empty today. Walking around this area near Africa rocks though, and they've got tons of plant life from Africa, including like a dwarf Madagascar palm, which is quite interesting looking, especially for someone from North America, or I always forget how to say it properly, but baobab tree? These things get insanely massive. Like, I'll put a picture in. Literally hundreds of feet wide, if I'm correct. Just insane to see one this small. I know it takes a long freaking time, but still. To give you an idea of how large a continent Africa really is, there's 40 to 60,000 different types of plants and almost just as many types of animals and insects, if not lots more. Well, if I'm doing my math correct, there's a heck of a lot more. Still hanging out in the Ethiopian highlands. We just saw some baboons. And now we're seeing some galatas. I hope I'm saying that right, but they're they're relatives of the baboons with a golden coat and a different face and bigger teeth. But now we've made it to the main section of Africa rocks. And of course, with this area being probably the, the zoo's newest, at least until the children's zoo opens up this fall, it is absolutely amazing over here. A giant tree bridge brings us all the way down to an 80 foot tall waterfall no joke we'll see it in a second but there's a lot to explore before we get down there heck i could do a whole video on this area alone well we just left the ethiopian highlands now we're in the acacia woodland where there should be some leopards out sadly i don't think they're out right now but that's okay We'll just have to move on after looking at some crazy looking acacia trees. Something that's also really cool is they have a multi-level bird exhibit. There's the entrance up top. Here's the entrance where we are now after walking down a little bit, but there are tons of little African birds all over the place. Stepping into the absolutely incredible bird exhibit now. There are some big ones hiding in the tree, but look at all these nests everywhere. All attending, building. And I've never heard so many chirps in my life, even though I live in a bird sanctuary. This is crazy. Apparently, these white-fronted bee-eaters will nest in these little holes in the side of walls, which, talk about a, a daring life. I guess it's not so scary when you have wings to make sure you never fall all the way down to the ground, I guess. This is the white and black one. Talk about some gorgeous bird species though. Looking at some of the species though that we've been watching, especially those those yellow manted widow birds and the Tavetta golden weavers, those ones have been crazy flying all over the place, almost hitting us in the head. And then the pintailed wida, I don't know how to say that honestly, <laughs> but absolutely incredible to see all of these birds flying all over the place. And there's even fish right over here tons of them literally like an insane amount of fish i know the glare doesn't really help but i, I promise you there are hundreds of fish in my view right now i won't lie to you i've always had kind of a fear of birds but being in here right now i'm doing okay i'm doing okay them flying over my head but they flew in front of me instead of behind me that time dang it <laughs> but at least a couple of them landed right here well, now we're actually hopping the ocean a little bit. We're heading into Madagascar. After being in the acacia woodland. Let's see some lemurs. Of course, it would not be a Madagascar exhibit without the world famous ring-tailed lemur. If you know King Julian from the Madagascar series, this is what he's supposed to be. Some of the most iconic animals, especially out of Africa and Madagascar specifically. <laughs> Oh, 
or of course you know the ring-tailed lemur best if you're from my generation from Zaboomafu. Great show. Ah, dang it. If only I didn't care, but I can't see the honey badger right now. Uh, he is one bad... I, I can't say that. I can't say that on this channel. I did promise everyone an 80 foot tall waterfall. Well, let's uh, look inside. Oh, it's loud and wet. Talk about a spectacular sight though, especially for a zoo. And that's not even part of an exhibit. And to get to the last area of the area, you've got this gorgeous view of that sky lift, even the top of that church over there. And even that iconic bridge. I mean, this is literally one of the best sight lines in the entire zoo. And it's right next to some penguins. And apparently, this penguin pool was made possible by Audrey Geisel and the Dr. Seuss Foundation. That's a cool fact. Now, believe it or not, this giant aquarium right next door to the penguins is actually attached. So yes, there are leopard sharks swimming around in the penguin exhibit. Don't worry though, they're not gonna hurt the penguins at all. But it's absolutely incredible down here. Yeah, here you go. They actually compete for food, trying to get, you know, small fish, crustaceans, and the like. So yeah, no, they, they don't attack each other. They just uh, compete in the food chain. Well, that's gonna end our little journey into Africa rocks. Sadly, unlike the last time I was here, um, the penguins weren't swimming in that giant tank. They were, though, that last time I was here, and it was just insane to see them all just going crazy all over that tank, swim around with the sharks and be like, nah, screw you, get out of my way. It was just incredible. Well, after leaving Africa rocks, I think it's time for some lunch. Let's go to the Kwame Cafe. Look at this, got our awesome food. Two orders of orange chicken, some vegetables, spring rolls, and some pod stickers. Let's dig in. After eating some lunch, we're heading down this giant pathway, right where the giant pandas used to be. Sadly, they're not here anymore. They've been returned to China, which is a big bummer because I always loved seeing the pandas while I was here, but at least the red pandas and the takens, or the, I, I don't know how to say that exactly, but they're still here, so let's let's go check them out. Here's the Takens. They are quite interesting creatures found in China in the mountainous terrain. Almost like miniature yaks in a way is how I would describe them, but really majestic and kind of interesting. Staying in southern China, not so much near the Himalayas anymore though, and down into Myanmar. We have the red panda, which they're technically not pandas at all, but you can see him chilling in the tree, sunbathing. Really, really cute creatures though. I wish I could just pet him. To give you a better idea of where like the tickens would be, kind of towards Bhutan over there in, in Tibet, and even almost in India over there in that, in that region. And then of course the red panda, gonna be kind of in this whole region right here is where they would be. Well, we've gone from the steep slopes of southern China to the lost forests of the world. Now, lost forests specifically means like rainforests in Africa or in India and in the subcontinent. So let's check out what animals they have over here. There's the hippo. First animal of the trail. Well, the hippo we're looking at, his name's Otis. Born March 1st, 1976. What? They lived that long? I didn't even know. Otis was deciding to take a very long nap. Came up for a couple of breaths every once in a while, but now we're looking at the okapi. That was the animal I brought up earlier. Kind of a zebra giraffe type of thing, but absolutely one of my favorite animals of all time. Super, super shy. Usually only travel in a very small groups in the middle of the forest in Africa. And, um, yeah, I just absolutely love them. Kind of harder to see because they're hiding all the way back there behind some rocks and trees, but fantastic creatures. Looks like it's feeding time though. They're trying to get some food back there. It seems like one wants to come out and say hi.
I always find it hysterical hanging out by the old copy exhibit for a little while because you have so many people come up and they're like, is that a zebra? Is that a donkey? No joke, two seconds after I filmed that clip, that was someone's reaction that walked by us. Oh look, zebras. Oh look, wait, donkeys? What the heck is that? Literally the main quote that goes through a lot of people's heads when they see old copies. But here, some pheasants it looks like, some doves as well, some finches too. Another one of my favorites on this trail. Tapirs taking a little nap over there. Also very, very interesting creatures that everyone's like, what the heck is that? Or as Caitlin would say, dinosaur pigs. Technically we are on the tiger trail now, although we did just pass by the tiger. Tiger was really, really hard to see, so I didn't film it. Well, the tiger trail has officially ended. Now we're uh, seeing some monkeys, Angolan colobus monkeys to be exact. They're grooming right now. Really beautiful up close though. We've officially come to the monkey trail now. This is actually Schmidt's red tail monkeys. They're kind of climbing all around. Supposedly there's mandrills in here too, commonly confused with baboons, but sadly I uh, can't spot any of those right now. But I will say the Schmidt's red tail monkeys are literally jumping all around when I'm not filming them. <laughs> and they uh, look to be having quite a fun time. But now it's only fitting to join them in the tops of the trees, going up this stairway into a treetop bridge. And this way we can get an even better view of all of them from so high up. Now, something I did not expect on this was uh, pygmy hippos. I love pygmy hippos. They're like little, small hippos as their naming inclines, but man, kind of makes up for not being able to see the baby hippo today. I won't lie to you, we've seen more birds than monkeys on the monkey trail. But look at these guys. Massive. And right right in front of us. Hi, son. That's bright. But they're in this giant aviary. We might have to come and check it out because we can see a path all the way down there. But literally, massive. Probably like 40, 50 feet tall. And literally a ridiculous amount of birds in here. So right here we have some bald ibises or ibises right there on the, the ledge. Then a stork and a spoonbill all in this little sideline over to the gorillas now a couple of them are out they are sleeping over in that corner over there if you can see a foot but yeah it seems like all the animals are tuckered out midday maybe it's because it's really hot out so just walked by the orangutans and uh sadly none of them are out in the sun today which i understand it is pretty hot Walking by the exit and, of course, the many gift shops over here. We're heading towards that SkyTram. Don't know if it's free or not. I think even if it's a couple bucks, I'm willing to pay it. Because it's something I've never done here. Always been told it's literally one of the best ones in the world. So let's head that way. Ah, uh, there's the entrance for the SkyTram. At least one of them. And the Children's Zoo opening fall of this year. Looks like they've got some buildings under construction right at the moment. Can't wait to vi visit again, you know, check it out. Because I know there's a lot to see and do whenever that reopens. Or opens for the first time, I guess I should say. Well, it does look like these are free. We weren't shown anything to pay or whatnot, but sponsored by Alaska. Kind of funny, but makes sense. Alaska is a big flyer out here. get a great view of the children's zoo that looks absolutely incredible they are currently working on it right as we speak oh my goodness look at all that's going to be added on this is incredible and then we get great views into balboa park as well over there man that children's zoo is going to be something to behold is coming to a close about just as long as it took to wait in line very quick but very beautiful and scenic really liked all the views we got of some of the exhibits and just the surrounding area 
I will say though, it is incredibly windy up here. So I apologize if you can't understand a word I just said. Now the main reason we took that sky Safari all the way to the back of the park, well, of course, to see the polar bears. Uh, love me some polar bears. Ah, dang it, the moment I take out the camera, you can see them in that little doorway in the center of the screen right there, just about to come out, and then he hooked a left. So hopefully they come out just a little bit so we can see them. But yeah, definitely a very hot day, so I would understand staying in the back where it's a little cooler. Oh, there he is, popping out of the back. Dang it, why, why, why are we gonna be over here? Now I will say this polar bear is a little bit smaller, probably younger too because some polar bears get insanely massive. And I will show you guys that right now. But yeah, as I said, uh, definitely don't think he's full size because full size is, um, we're talking that's that's probably like 11 feet tall. That's, it's just, uh, the creatures are, uh, creatures are amazing. And it makes me think about how puny we humans truthfully are. Like, look, look, look at this literally too high of me so 12 feet i guess and now 10 feet away i'm just about the same height and here's the polar bears some siberian reindeer i mean just look at those antlers just absolutely gorgeous you can see actually some of the velvet coming off of one of them even more birds up here i think there's more birds than anything else in this zoo but if you thought emperor penguins are the only bird or large bird to be called emperor well you'd be wrong Emperor Goose exists too, and they're quite beautiful. Now I will say, while it does give beautiful views over here, uh, a plus to going on the Sky Fari, you don't have to walk up that massive hill on that sidewalk and go all the way up to the top. With the Sky Fari, we just had to come down a little bit. We're gonna go back up a little bit too, and head over to Elephant Odyssey. So I will say, I highly, highly recommend taking the Sky Fari. If you don't wanna walk up that massive hill or walk down it, Saves you a lot of steps, even though you have to wait in a little bit of a line. All right, it's officially time. We've made it to realistically the last major expansion of the zoo, at least that we haven't seen yet, but we've officially made it to Elephant Odyssey. I always loved Elephant Odyssey for actually showing off creatures that used to be in Southern California during like the ice ages. Really crazy to think of all of these insanely massive animals all around. And some of them still live here today. But imagine the American lion still walking around today. Like, come on, man. That would be terrifying to see walking down, like, in downtown LA or something. And right next to him, Colombian mammoth. That used to roam around Southern California, too. I'm like, huh, I can't tell you how big this is. It's, it's pretty massive. Now, of course, the closest thing we can get to an American lion today would be the African lion. I know they don't really look similar, but that's just how it goes. And I, I can tell right now one's a little less menacing. And of course, the closest thing to a Colombian mammoth we can find today, African and Asian elephants. And another really interesting creature that used to live all over the place, now in just a couple places in the world, a tapir. We saw one of these a little earlier today, but this one's out and about active. Here's a mural looking at what it could have looked like thousand years ago and now what it looks like today but we did get to see both African and Asian elephants along our journey in the elephant odyssey literally though 12,000 years ago this could have been a scene we saw a camel being stalked by a big cat well on our way back toward the front we walked through this section Copia Copi Cop J, tell me how you think it's said in the comments down below. I will say though, later in the day, all the animals are a little bit more active. So maybe save your visit until three, four o'clock in the afternoon and you'll see a lot more animals walking around like this rhino. On our way out, we decided to stop in the Scripps Aviary. That's the one I was talking about earlier with the spoonbill and the stork. Look at, speaking of which, the stork just caught some food. But I've never seen so many interesting birds in one place in my life, and it's a multi-level experience.
There's so many birds here. It is literally the most relaxing place in the zoo, I think. We've literally been sitting here for 25 minutes just watching this little bird eat away. I could seriously sit in here for hours though. It is just that calming. And just to listen to the birds chirping away with the waterfall, man, that's a whole new level of relaxation. Literally all I would need is a massage to go along with it and I'd melt as a human being. We're gonna see if we can find the baby hippos. But to do that, we're gonna go through the second level of the aviary. And as soon as we walk in, we've got some little ducklings of some sort. Or teals, maybe? I'll, I'll try and find out what exactly they are. Well, with the little chirps they were doing, that name makes a lot of sense. So we were sitting up there, but down here, quite the view of the waterfall. That is gorgeous. I do hate that I have to say this though. Keep your distance from all the birds whenever you enter an aviary and don't try and be a jerk. It's not worth it. Also, don't feed them, of course. But yeah, just just don't be a jerk to the, to the poor little animals in here. The reason I mentioned that is because we just saw a couple like film in the faces of those little ducks that we just saw and like try and scare them in some way. It's just, it's just not cool at all. Like, come on. Maybe it's a good thing we went through that second floor of the aviary though. We got a beautiful view of the Malayan tiger that's sitting right up top of the enclosure. Definitely a better view here than down in those little glass cases where we were a little earlier in the day, but yeah, absolutely amazing. Kind of terrifying, but gorgeous creatures. Hey, can you say hi? Aww. You're thinking about it. <laughs> well, after walking the hippo trail yet again, we found the eagle trail which has this giant enclosure with harpy eagles and more. It's huge. And we're totally on a bridge right now. How cool is that? And we can look down into a valley. If, if this helps with height, we're about two and a half double-decker buses up. And Ian Condor is flying around too. The Condor came down to show us who's boss. <laughs> they are so massive. We're talking like a 15-foot wind command. It's, it's incredible. That's literally almost two me's. Sadly, haven't spotted the Harpy's Eagle, but to give you a perspective, we have the same wingspan. And that weighs only 20 pounds. I weigh quite a bit more than that. Uh, and as we finally make our way out, looking at the old giant panda exhibit, it looks like they've changed it into a red panda exhibit by the signs. Don't see the red panda anywhere at the moment. But yeah, I, I wish we still had our, our pandas here because they were quite the sight to behold. And we were one of the three places in the United States to see them, and I think only Atlanta and Washington DC have them now. But yeah, there used to be giant pandas all over these exhibits. <sighs> but now they are in a sanctuary in China. Well, on the way back, we spotted our red panda friend. He's all the way up there. And he's so, oh my gosh, he is so freaking adorable. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, he's so cute. making our way down Center Street. Uh-oh, looks like we have a bus coming on Central Street. They do have a lot of bears, like the Andean bear right here. He's snoozing away. Just up boys, we have the North American grizzly. Honestly, a little smaller than I would have thought. I don't know exactly what he's digging away at, but he's digging away. And the final exhibit on the street is the sun bear. But the sun bear is awake and scratching his own back. Oh, I guess the sun bears aren't here anymore. This is actually another Indian bear. My bad. <laughs> so that's gonna do it from our wonderful day at the San Diego Zoo. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, like all those things, and check out all the description links because I've got brand new pins, some Twitch stuff. It's great, it's a, it's a fun time. So if you haven't yet, make sure to check all of them out and leave some comments. What are your favorite animals? Let me know. But of course, until next time, we'll see you on the next ride.